Republican candidates today still like to say that they are the party of Abraham Lincoln. But I don't know what kind of conversation they'd have with Abe if he should come back and uh, want to bring up the subject of Donald Trump. Abraham Lincoln is the exemplar of a 19th century idea of a center-left progressive who uh, was going to change the, the country by helping it see the reality of what it's been doing and break it out of the dream of what slavery had been called. He was the first president to call it by what it really was. And the war was the tragic catalyst by which the nation had to come to terms with it. There was a, a term for people, not Lincoln, but in his party called radical Republicans. And these were people who believed they were abolitionists. They, they, uh, they wanted to burn the institutions of slavery down. And they wanted no accommodation with the South. Whereas Lincoln, toward the end, before he died, was talking about accommodating. The people who were Republicans then were considered the progressives. We had William McKinley, who comes into office, this is now 1897. He comes into office after a, what was called the Great Depression. A Great Depression of 1893 was devastating. And of course, nothing was as devastating as what we think of as the Great Depression, 1929. Uh, but at that time, thousands of people were thrown out of work. It whipped through the coal industry, whipped through the railroads. And McKinley came into office uh, challenging William Jennings Bryan. And it was the beginning of the pro progressive era. And when McKinley is shot, and Theodore Roosevelt becomes president. He is thought of as, as the really great firebrand progressive, but he's actually, to a certain extent, uh, enacting the McKinley program. But these were Republicans. McKinley, Roosevelt, Taft, even Taft, who we think of as conservative, was, was far more involved in antitrust actions against corporations than Theodore Roosevelt was. Nobody realizes that. He was just more conservative in his manner. Uh, he called himself conservative. And, and the 1912 election was this, this big battle to see who could be more progressive than the next guy. And then, and then Wilson becomes president, and he's the first Democrat in a long time, and he's basically doing Roosevelt's program. But that was kind of the end. After World War I, the Republicans then become much more the party of Wall Street. The economy is going really well for them. They're having a great time. Money is flowing. And they then get taken over by Harding, Coolidge, Hoover, Hoover uh, Republicanism, which is all about laissez-faire, hands off, let it go. It's doing great. Everybody's having a great time. And, uh, and then after the Depression, they sort of don't know where they are. And that's kind of devastating for them until Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon is the big change agent because he recognizes something called the Southern Strategy. This is now the Civil Rights Era, the 1960s. Nixon says, uh, I know how I can win. I can speak in code to people who are upset about these changes and they will quietly vote for me. And when he says silent majority, He's not talking about people in the Bronx. He's talking about people who are upset about change. And unfortunately for the Republicans, they have been the party about upset about change ever since. And the only thing that's different between today and 1969 is there's much more change. And it's happening much faster. So the Republican Party has this problem to deal with. Uh, how can you be uh, against change in a time that is famous for change? And a party that doesn't address what's on everybody's mind is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So we don't know right now, I'm, we're speaking in 2016, we don't know what kind of shape the Republican Party is going to be in going forward, or even if there's going to be one Republican Party. 
there may be four 